Hello folks, Victor here for KR Gadget TV and what happens when you take the flagship qualities of the Oppo Find X and the sleek design of the Oppo R17 Pro, you marry them together and you get this, the Oppo Reno. I spent a few weeks with the phone and I'm glad to report that it's a worthy replacement to the Oppo R series. Let's find out why. We'll be talking about the Reno Standard Edition, which is a mid-range device that also has a bigger brother in the Reno 10x Zoom Edition, which is a flagship. The Reno is a 6.4-inch device that features a near-bezel-less OLED display. The panel pushes 1080p resolution and our time with it was fantastic. The colors are vivid and sharp, while brightness is impressive too. Comparing it with the similarly priced Xiaomi Mi 9, the Reno is so much brighter and more vivid. Moving on to the back, you'll notice this comes in a classy matte finish painted in ocean green. Oppo adds a nice touch to the design with a glossy line running down the middle which bears the company's logo. The back panel has curved edges which makes the phone look premium and ergonomics are decent too. It doesn't look like it but the texture is actually very smooth and best part about it, it doesn't really attract fingerprints. But the phone is slippery so use the case that comes with it. The camera modules at the back are flush with the panel, which is nice. And the old dot feature here, that's this little dot here that raises the phone a little bit to help protect the lenses from scratches. The phone is quite thick, but we reckon this is to house the selfie module. And speaking of, this is why people are talking about the Oppo Reno. Check this out. This is what Oppo calls the pivot rising structure. And long-winded names aside, the 16MP selfie shooter actually does a good job in making me look palatable. It's an all-around standard AI affair, and there's not a lot of um, features to speak about either. And speaking about the module, the phone is equipped with a drop protection system. Watch. The camera module retracts when it detects a fall. Next, let's talk about the phone's cameras at the back. The main shooter is a 48 megapixel camera that's paired with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Of course, the phone uses the Sony IMX 586 sensor, so you're pretty much guaranteed good photo quality, which you can see in these photos here. After some testing, the images are fantastic. In broad daylight with just the regular 12 megapixel mode, the colors look natural and it is sharp. There is AI scene recognizer which helps a bit with the colors. We also snapped in 48 megapixel resolution and the quality is crisper but it's not immediately noticeable. Scene recognition doesn't work with 48 megapixel mode however. There's also no wide angle camera on this which is a bit disappointing since it's pretty much standard in today's smartphones. There is 10 times digital zoom and the graininess isn't too bad but as with most high zoom lenses you're gonna need a tripod for a steady shot. But let's move on to the most impressive thing about the cameras, which is nighttime photography performance. Scene recognizer can detect nighttime and adjust, but it's the separate ultra night mode that's really impressive. All it requires is 3 seconds for it to snap a nighttime shot, and the results are great. The images are bright with minimal noise, and shaky hands doesn't really affect the quality a lot either. What isn't so great is the portrait mode. It's fine when it comes to objects, but when it comes to humans, the bokeh eats up certain parts of the subject's hair, albeit you'd have to pay really close attention or zoom in really close to notice. And the bokeh doesn't really look natural either. With that said, the Reno is still a complete package when it comes to photography. The similarly priced Xiaomi Mi 9 doesn't perform nearly as well as the Reno, while the similarly classed Vivo V15 Pro doesn't perform as well when it comes to nighttime photography. But what's camera performance if the phone isn't any fun to use, right? The Reno runs a Snapdragon 710 chipset along with 6GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage. Because it's not a flagship, it doesn't get the Snapdragon 855, something that the Xiaomi Mi 9 does. And it shows. The Reno isn't quite as responsive as the Mi 9, apps don't load up as fast and there's noticeable stuttering when you're scrolling. Despite both displays pushing 60Hz refresh rates, the Reno is noticeably not as smooth. But with that said, the Snapdragon 710 actually does quite well when it comes to gaming. We played PUBG Mobile on everything set to high and I can't remember experiencing any stutters at all. The phone also stays relatively cool even with long gaming hours, so I suppose the Snapdragon 855 isn't really needed here. 
The Oppo Reno is powered by a 3765 mAh battery that charges via USB-C. And battery life here is decent and the phone supports 20 watts Vogue 3.0 flash charge, the latest charging tech from Oppo and with this, the Reno charges from 10% to full in about 50 minutes, which is fast. And yes, a phone this thick must have a 3.5mm headphone jack. The phone ships with Oppo's Color OS 6, which is one of the better operating systems around if you compare with other Chinese manufacturers like Xiaomi, Vivo and Huawei. And with this, at least you get an app drawer, which I really like. Now if you're thinking of getting the Oppo Reno, know that you're getting a phone that's one of the best out there when it comes to photography. And on top of that, it feels flagship, it's got a really cool selfie module, and it feels great in the hands. All for only 1,999 ringgit. But if you want performance, you can get the similarly priced Xiaomi Mi 9, which comes with a Snapdragon 855, but we feel that the Oppo Reno is a more complete package. Alright, so that's our review of the Oppo Reno. If you like to see more videos on a weekly basis, remember to subscribe. If you like the video, remember to give us a thumbs up. That's all from me today. See ya.